Hi Hunters, Zook here. With Sunbreak released, I wanted to create a resource video series for the Hunting Horn, kind of a way to give back to the community. There's a lot of information and resources that I feel like we take advantage of, tools and knowledge that others might not have access to, so I just want to document and cover some of these in order to share them with a wider audience. Recently, some viewers were wondering if I was going to do some build videos, and I'll be honest, I don't feel like it would be a good idea to make a video covering a set that'll soon be irrelevant from something like, oh, I don't know, Capcom deciding to release a title update with brand new augmenting systems and ways to get additional skills on armor pieces. But that would never happen. That would be crazy, right? Right, guys? So instead, I want to focus on resources that can be used regardless of what the title updates bring. So today, I want to cover some principles of set building in comparison for Hunting Horn. This includes charm and armor scoring, set searching, and set comparisons, so that you, the viewer, can make educated and informed decisions with your sets and build the most efficient sets available regardless of what game version we're on. So to begin, we have to talk about the elephant in the room, RNG systems. Anytime we want to make recommendations or create sets, we need to take the RNG systems into consideration. And for Sunbreak, our biggest offenders are our charms and the new armor augmentation system. Let's cover the charms first. In order to evaluate how useful a charm is to us, we can use a point system in order to score charms. The ground rules for this are as follows. If a charm includes a skill that is relevant to our weapon, it'll be given one point per skill. Next, if a charm includes a level 2 or above deco slot, it'll be giving 1 point. Now this is where it can get a little messy, because level 3 and 4 deco slots can count as 2 or more points, but only if the level 3 or 4 deco used provides 2 or more relative skills. Obviously this scoring then becomes weapon and deco dependent. As for level 1 slots, we don't count any of them as a point even though mandatory skills like Horn Maestro and in the case of Elemental Horns, Elemental Attack Up decos can be used in these three spaces. A charm with a 3-1-1 slot and a charm with a 2 slot will be scored equally at 1 point. And a maximum point charm would be something with 5 relative weapon skills and a minimum level 2 slot, valued at a total of 6 points. Now for the difficult part, Armor Augmenting. While incredibly RNG and resource intensive, the new armor augmentation system can be incredibly useful. With a max of 7 possible augments being made to any given armor piece, and with relevant weapon skills being included in the augmentation skill pool, we will all want to be taking advantage of the system to build better sets. If you would like to watch a detailed breakdown on the limitations of the new armor augmenting system, I would recommend checking out this video by my good friend Brill, which covers Detilner's data mine spreadsheet for the armor budgets and augment costs. I'll provide a link in the description. Charm and armor efficiency scoring can be messy with all the updates to decos and slots that Sunbreak has brought us, so instead let's cover what counts as a relevant skill for Hunting Horn that we would want on our charms or armor augments. Our unconditional armor skills are skills that provide us with benefits simply by including them in our armor with no restrictions for activation. These include Attack Boost, Element Attack, Critical Eye, Critical Boost, Critical Element, Horn Maestro, and Mail of Hellfire. Our simple conditional armor skills will require only one restriction for the skill to be activated. An example is Weakness Exploit. It requires us to be attacking a hit zone of 45 or greater for it to activate. The list of simple conditional skills that we want to keep an eye out for include Agitator, Peak Performance, Resentment, Resuscitate, Coalescence, Weakness Exploit, Maximum Might, Latent Power, Grinder, Foray, Element Exploit, Sneak Attack, Adrenaline Rush, Affinity Sliding, and Dragonheart. Our complex conditional armor skills will be skills that have multiple activation factors or different forms of benefits that the skill can provide. An example of this is our Bloodlust skill, where it can provide an attack buff in its frenzy state, or an affinity buff when we overcome the frenzy. Our complex conditional skills that we will benefit from include Bloodlust, Dereliction, Chain Crit, and Fortify. Additional skills of note that could be valuable on charms include Protective Polish, Handicraft, Wirebug Whisperer, Razor Sharp, and Master's Touch. Basically anything to help us with sharpness management. And while there are efficient slots and armor pieces that include these skills, I still want to include them because everyone's situations for builds could be influenced by the charms they currently have. Now let's move on to how we use our charms and armor. I'm sure most people are familiar with this website, but I still run across people who have never heard of it before, so I want to quickly cover it. 
This is the Monster Hunter Rise Wiki Armor Set Searcher. Link in the description. Now we started with our charms, so the first thing we want to do on this website is navigate to the charms tab here. Using this we can create a repository for all the useful charms we have in the game. If you are in Switch, this might be time consuming to add them all manually, but for PC we have tools to help us. There is a fantastic mod created by DSC173 that will create a list of all the charms you have in the game and then export them into a format that can then be uploaded to this website. A link to that mod will also be included in the video description. The set searcher has also been updated to include the armor augmentation skills. It works similar to the charms where you add an armor piece and the skills you augmented onto it and it will factor that into the search. However, I won't be using this today, just to keep things simple. In fact, for the set today, I'll be using a charm with zero skills and only two level two slots. Now, once you have all useful charms and armor augments included in this list, we can navigate back to the search tab and simply add in the skills we want. If your set can be created with your search parameters, then it will be displayed at the bottom. So with my two two slot charm, if I wanted to build a non-dereliction raw hunting horn set with the fine Kimura flute, I would add in my weapon slots up here at the top, and then search for something including Attack Boost 7, Crit I7, Weakness Exploit 3, Crit Boost 3, Chain Crit 1, and Horn Maestro. And the set searcher would show me it's possible with these armor pieces and the charm we added in the other tab. Any additional skills or slots you receive not included with your set search parameters will be displayed here. And then if I wanted to make a dereliction set using the same charm, I could search for something with Attack Boost 7, Resentment 5, Weakness Exploit 3, Crit Boost 3, Dereliction 3, Maximum Might 2, Chain Crit 1, and Horn Maestro, and I would get this set. The set searcher is pretty self-explanatory once you get used to the website layout. If you can't find a result, then begin reducing levels on some skills to find what you can make. So we know how to evaluate our charms and we know how to search for possible sets, but what about set comparisons? For the two theoretical builds I just made, one focused on maxing out affinity and critical hit damage while the other focused on increasing our attack first and dealing with lower affinity. So which one is stronger? How do we compare these? Well thanks to the amazing work by Zaro, we now have a spreadsheet where we can input all relative weapon set and monster data and compare the two sets across all attacks and main combos. Let's fill this out using the data from our two theoretical sets using both the fine Kimura flute so I can demonstrate how it works. Set 1 in green will be our non-dereliction set, while set 2 in red will use dereliction. At the top we can choose the scroll we use during the hunt. For our dereliction set, we'll want to use the blue scroll for its provided damage increase, so I'll just set both of these to blue. Next we input our base weapon info for the fine Kimura flute, this being 310 raw, no element, zero base affinity, and then following this we can add our primary, secondary, and tertiary sharpness levels and the percent time we stay at each level of sharpness. We default to 95% of our best option and 5% of the next tier. I would not recommend changing this unless you want to evaluate sets over specific hunts and scripted runs. In the next few sections we can input our unconditional armor skills followed by our simple conditional armor skills and finally our complex conditional armor skills. Where when applicable we can adjust the uptime of the different levels of buffs and the different states the buffs are in. Feel free to adjust them as you see fit using the data from your own hunts. Or if you just want to do quick comparisons between sets, just use the default values provided. And lastly, we can add any song consumable and environmental buffs. The Fire and Kimura Flute has an attack up song, so we'll be checking this box, and then the combined raw from the Power Charm and Power Talon is 15, so we can add that here. Moving on to the next section for monster data, we can input the monster in rage modifiers, the hit zone values we want to look at, and two different elemental hit zone values in case you wanted to compare two different elemental sets. For this example, let's use our old buddy Crab in the Swamp from our core combos video. Daimyo has a 60 blunt hit zone value for his head and a 1.2 in rage modifier. Included with this spreadsheet is a link to Meki's monster hit zone value data charts where you can search for any monster in order to use accurate hit zone data. I highly recommend you use this link instead of the in-game hunter's notes as the latter is severely missing data and values for different monster states. Meki's charts are more accurate and provide us with much more useful info. So below our monster data we have our calculated EFR, SEFR, and EFE compared between both sets. We can see that set 1, our non-dereliction set, has 750.24 effective raw, 654.98 shockwave effective raw, and 0 effective element. While the dereliction set has 785.01 effective raw, 757.47 shockwave effective raw, and 0 effective element. The graph below is used to chart the effective raw compared to shockwave effective raw for both sets. 
In this example, the line doesn't cross, and we can see that the red line, representing set 2, is greater at all points than the green line, representing set 1. If you were to use this chart and the lines were to cross like this, then the graph will calculate the break-even point for these two sets. So for what you're seeing right now, that break-even point is 40.47% shockwave damage. Meaning that as long as set 2's total damage for the hunt is made up from 40.47% shockwave damage, then this set will be better than set 1. The reverse is also true. If set 1 uses less than 40.47% shockwave damage in total, then it'll be better than set 2. To the right of our monster data, we can see all attacks and some combos with and without Silkbind Shockwaves active comparing both sets with set 1 as a baseline. If the percent difference is negative or red, then it means that set 2 is that percent better than set 1 for that attack or combo. Positive or green numbers would indicate that set 1 was that percent better than set 2 for those attacks or combos. This part is all pretty self-explanatory. So now after the comparison, you should have a clear idea of which set is better. However, I would still recommend taking the calculated EFR, EFE, and your set's crit rate and plugging them into Glass's core combo spreadsheet covered in the previous video to look at all possible combo efficiencies for your sets. Hi everyone! I just want to give a quick shout out to Zaro, Glass, T-Self, and Gravion for their hard work, especially Zaro for creating this amazing tool for comparing sets, and I hope you are all able to get some use out of it and find it as helpful as I do. This spreadsheet is seriously an amazing tool for comparing sets against specific monster matchups. I also want to say a huge thanks to Aerodoxus for these amazing Hunting Horn weapon cards. Aerodoxus has been making some awesome Hunting Horn content over on their channel, covering the sounds of Hunting Horns across all generations of Monster Hunter and some of the spin-off games like Stories and Stories 2, as well as helping out with larger projects like Bake's Melody Origins video. I have left a link to Aerodoxus' channel in the video description below, so make sure to check them out. Now, if you'd like to learn more about Hunting Horn, if you want to get better at Monster Hunter, or if you just want to hang out and chat with some really cool people, I recommend joining Amadeus' server, The Horn Pub. I've included a link in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more Hunting Horn-related content and speedruns, and as always, thank you for watching.